Good morning, all. It is a great pleasure to be here, and I'd like to start my conversation with you guys, speaking to Mr. Rio and telling him that our society is indeed going towards all the paths you have. And we confirmed our presence here. The first thing I did for your name, Mr. Rio, to check how and what your lecture will be like. And everything I have seen is really prioritized here. Uh, congratulations to you and to the good organization of Tele Brazil. It was a very happy uh, occasion here. We have, have had a presentation about futurism here, which is not that much in the future as it is actually happening. And I will try to, within that very short period of time that has been given me, is try to show you how us at the Ministry of Education and the federal government are taking advantage of all these ideas to provide our society and especially our uh, as students with opportunities. This is the most important word that we have here, which is the issue of autonomy and opportunity. And this comes basically uh, in line with what Mr. Rio has said in terms of how society has been changing. We need to look at society differently from what we used to look at it before. Well, the actions that the ministry has been taking in terms of using education technologies, they are structured basically in three main axes. I would, we would place them as infrastructure, capacity building, and content. These issues are incredibly important to uh, the ministry and to society as a whole, of course. And a lot of what we do today has, however, been altered or modified by the issues are by the point that we decided to work on about three years ago more heavily, which is the broadband program in schools, this broadband in schools program, of which you are all very intimate participants, of course. And this program was born in Telebrazil, if I'm not mistaken, in 2006. Is that correct? Yes. So everything that we're going to talk about here and everything that we're going to collect in the near future in terms of education and society in Brazil you can be sure that this has a lot to do with the decisions and the ideas that you have had in 2006. Just for you to remember a little bit about the past, the, the Broadband in Schools program was launched in April 2008. And, uh, as without a shadow of doubt, it has had a historical and will have a historical meaning to the country. Currently, it is potentially the highest capacity or capillarity digital inclusion program in the world. We're talking about digitally including more than 30 million people. For you to understand the potential of the Broadband in Schools program, what you can look at in the screen is a, a jumble of words. This is the product of a conversation we've had with students in public schools. This, uh, 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 <coughs> other than working in the ministry, I also work directly as a vocational or a coordinator in a school. So I both define policies and I suffer everything that happens to a school very dearly because I work on them. And one of the stories that have been told within a, a school in Brasilia was basically for, uh, I asked my students in a computer lab what the existence of that computer lab and its connection to the internet meant for them. And they basically gave me a bunch of words and I wrote them down. And one of the words they talked about the most was novelty. As much as we believe that our, our population has broad access to high-speed internet, to computers, and to everything, they still see it as novelty, which is something to see. Another word that was very strong is higher interest from the students. This is something that they came up with. And this is, of course, that we see uh, in our statistics becoming lower rates of evasion because there is higher interest. 
Another thing that drew my attention was the issue of services that they mentioned and that Ry uh, Mr. Rio just mentioned. Our population today already sees the capacity of computing and connectivity to be a provider of services and services of any sort. Services that today arrive at our society and arrive at their perspective through the internet. We really need to prepare for this, to how the internet provides services. Another thing they mention very clearly is evaluation. The school, the community that is provided with broadband, that is provided with computing and content services, it sees itself as a more valuable one. And the last word I'll show was not spoken by a student, but it was spoken by the then minister of the chief of staff, now president. Josef, who said, this is the biggest social opportunity program in the country. And I understand that to connect directly to the possibility of accessing such content is indeed an enormous social opportunity, something that we may have not drew attention to about 20, 20 or 30 years ago. People did not have the social opportunity in such a massive way as they do, uh, as we do actually, nowadays. The possibility of access to content in the digital era, they new show and new social share that we need to explore. The Telefonica Foundation in 2010 or 2009, if my memory serves me right, it started a survey with the following premise. We had changed in a very significant way how digital inclusion happened in the country. Up until then, we very strongly believed that digital inclusion happened through land houses or through any private initiatives that took place. As of 2009, we inflicted radical change to that scenario, and social and digital inclusion happens through our schools. Why? Because we are giving them, citizens, their first access, their first contact with digital reality. I'm a little bit more, let's say, conservative in and I have, okay, I coordinate the ministry education, brought the numbers on the I saw that my friend Carlos presented the numbers from the second quarter, but what we have here is 55,000, if we consider that the two months of the second quarter of 2011, we would actually have 58, almost 60,000 institutions connected by the Brand Band Schools program. For you to have an idea of what this means in terms of access to the internet, Today we have the potential to reach, with the connections we have hooked up at the National Public Schools, 29 million people. And this number grows at the rate of 2.5 million people every quarter. We will close this year providing connectivity services to at least from 32 to 35 million students in public schools with uh, uh, broadband. This is the current distribution uh, per state of the program in the schools. If you look at the chart, you will see some disparities that we would not like to see. But in a country with such inequalities in size, such as Brazil, I would already consider this a gigantic success. And I would like to congratulate you all on my behalf and on behalf of the ministry and also congratulate the effort per undertaken by the carriers to make this happen. Three years ago when we started this program and we launched up the initiative to connect 56 million people in three years, a lot of people called us crazy. A lot of people said this would be impossible and that we would never be able to hook those people up. Living evidence, living proof that this is working is the fact that the majority of our states have 
their school services in terms of connectivity superior to 70 percent if you exclude those deviations which are gross deviations in this graph we admit and basically they represent issues of lack of infrastructure in the northern region and others we all have to we all have reason to celebrate here we cannot speak of a use of technology in education if we don't recover some issues of work in the ministry of education in terms of technology this work starts in 1997 with the release of a program called proinfo this proinfo program is based on three pillars which is capacity building infrastructure and content we always worked on those three axes on those three paradigms in 2002 the Ministry of Education uh, launched a, a digital education platform to support and, and mainly to uh, uh, support the, the creation of content by professors and by education, which we call the ProInfo. In 2005, we had a very strong change of public policies, and the ProInfo, which is the computing and education program, becomes a much more uh, comprising program and it becomes the integrated pro info integrated pro info gives the idea of bringing into the classroom for students to access all the content that is available in our society in 2008 we had the release now that we had the potential to have connections in all schools, we built what we call an ecosystem of content mainly. And then we built four portals plus school TV. So we're talking about the teacher's portal, the international object database, the public domain database, and the new EPRO info. All four portals supporting the entire uh, distance learning platform or e-learning platform undertaken by teaching institutions in the country. I'll be speaking about each of them in more detail after a moment. In 2010, we saw the need and the Secretariat of Distance Learning saw the need to make digital culture to be more than simply limited to computer labs at schools. The idea was to make teachers and students have access that technology can bring in any environments at school. For this, we thought of two things. Worldwide, we had a movement called UCA. which is one laptop per child, the, U, the OLPC program. In Brazil, to and at any place in school that he is, can make use of that to make real-time research, to make investigations, to ask questions about how professors are teaching new things based on the knowledge that he have of that equipment, of the things that he can get on the net. Besides, we have also seen that the teacher had a very strong resistance to bringing its students to a computer lab because within that environment he could not do one of the things that he was the most used to doing, which is lecturing explaining content by himself and he felt a little bit of an orphan there because he had nothing that could provide such model of teaching for instance if we tried today to make use of equipment such as the ones we're using today a notebook a projector a sound equipment if we do not have help from our technical guys to put up this equipment we will take 10 20 30 minutes to do it instead of two or three the lack of technical knowledge, therefore, was a big obstacle for teachers to have access to that technology. Many times they had content to use with that technology, but so often the terrain was so arid for him to prepare that space for him to have this display of content that he gave up on it. 
For such purpose, the Ministry of Education uh, launched what we call an integrated projector. It's a projector that is connected to a computer unit that can run a program as a notebook. It has a projector and it has sound power to provide not for a room as large as this, but for a 30, 45 square meters room, it will, which is a regular classroom, will be okay. This without the teacher needing to hook up any cables. It's a national pattern that has been very successful, and we have had several visits, including from TI, from Texas Instruments, one of the largest uh, microprocessor pro uh, producers in the world, and they were very interested to see it, and the vice president of TI turned to two of his engineers and asked them why didn't you think of this. So this is a national patent that we applied for last year, and the most interesting thing is the cost. If we account the cost of a projector, a computer, and sound equipment, maybe we would arrive at around 3,000 reais or $1,500. We have uh, bid this for uh, 1,460 reais for the entire equipment with delivery in school and three-year warranty. We have been able to do this for this price. So the effort that the Ministry of Education is undertaking to allow this to arrive in the classroom and to allow for this effort that we're undertaking here to bear fruit in the classrooms that are connected to the Internet is an incredibly large effort and a very valid one, of course. Of course, we'll only be able to see the real transformation that this will cause in a few uh, years. But we can see now, in our students, the way through which they have ch seen the school and how it has completely changed. These are the equipments, the equipment that we'll uh, build. In terms of content, this is a screenshot of the teacher portal. If we have an idea, this portal is accessed more than a million times each month by different users. That is, I have a very high level of access from my teachers. I have more than one million unique sessions. So they are seeking content. They are seeking new way to teach. What does this website provide? Besides links and the selected materials, one of the things that this website provides is the possibility for the professor or the teacher to plan his lessons by and use technology in the plan of his lessons because this website works together with another site that is the International Object Database. What is this International Object Database? We have mapped and we have uh, verified that it's not useful to have technology available to the teachers we, if we don't give me what to show with that technology. The teacher is not yet 100% uh, self-sufficient. He cannot produce 100% of the material he would like to have in his classroom. So how did we solve that? We collected materials, we have ordered digital materials, and we made them all available to these teachers within this international object database. The idea behind it is to allow the teacher to reach a level of autonomy that he needs in creating and using his own materials. Materials. Ryo spoke a lot about content, and today we are bombarded by content at all times. More than having content available, our great challenge today is making content and making this content actionable, findable, let's just say. How can I recover that content? If I'm teaching a physics class on rectilinear uniform movement, how can I find a good example within this enormous mass of knowledge that I have on the internet of exactly what I want to teach? The idea is to have the International Object Database have functionality for a teacher or for a citizen to be able to find quality content that is mapped and validated by specialists according to the area. This is not censorship, of course. This is the way we have found to allow teachers to easily find content that is connected to their area of expertise. So those two websites, they work together. In one of them, the teacher makes the entire planning of his lesson using the learning objects within the database I just mentioned. But even more interesting is that 
these lessons that the teacher prepares are made available so that other teachers can use the same lessons that he planned or within a collaborative framework ground their own lessons on those lessons that have previously been made there as examples. With that crowdsourcing effort, we have more than 13,000 lessons readily available. The, the teacher who prepares the lesson can make it private or public, depending on what his purpose is. And whenever he makes it public, he does it to all teachers in the system. So this pay-it-forward system is actually a helping the education of the children that we receive in our classes should be truly modified. This is not a government imposition, like Ryo said. This is a movement that is within the Internet. And people appropriate that content on their own volition. So this is not imposed at all. And this transformation does not begin with the teacher. It begins with the student. Because the student will start demanding his teacher why he doesn't use technology in the classroom more. And the student starts showing the teacher what possibilities he has for content, be it with a cell phone, a tablet, a computer. It's very interesting to see how this interaction of potentialities takes place within our own schools. Also, we have the ePROINFO, which is a management environment, a knowledge management environment, I'm sorry, that has been made available for teachers in universities and organizations to use it and to put the potential of distance learning within their context and make it happen within their context. Another website that is very interesting is the public domain website. This is a pretty old one. And for those who use the internet, they have probably received an email that you need to access the website, the public domain website, because otherwise it's going down. We joke around with this because this pen was produced by the public domain directors themselves, just as a scam to make sure that they get more accesses. Because this is, of course, a baseless rumor. The public domain website is a very robust website that enables access to very complete work, such as we have access from Machado de Assis, our greatest writer, all there, and a lot of other Brazilian works of public domain that have been compiled and uh, made available in this portal. But this is too little. We have been thinking of other things that we can use to add sense to the capacity building that we're providing to the professors and to the teachers and to the schools of Brazil. One of the things that we're working on is that there is already a focus group and a pilot project with 300 schools and will be soon launched by Minister Fernando Haddad. It's the student's portal. Similar to what we have for the teacher's portal, but of course a more pedagogically oriented environment that would allow students to find content, activities, and collaboration in the internet. We don't want students to stop accessing the social communities like Orkut or Facebook or High Five or any others that they currently access already. We want to give them the choice of having an environment that is controlled in the sense of contents that are being put there with a pedagogical environment. That is, instead of spending five, six hours looking at comments posted by their colleagues about things that they were doing, we would like to encourage them to seek knowledge with the pedagogical support of teachers, specialists within an environment uh, within the environment where we try to make it more interesting for them. This is a pilot project now in 300 schools, and the feedback we're getting from this is extremely positive. The students are giving us feedback that is truly wonderful, especially regarding their willingness to return to the portal after they access it the first time, which is great to hear. We also, of course, work with the prospection of new technologies. There is an order from the President um, Juma Rousseff to the Ministry of Education for the use of tablets in education. This is a personal request by the President. The use of mobile devices, not necessarily smartphones or cell phones, but 
mobile devices with which the users, with the with students, can access content, and groups with a pedagogical orientation, whatever they are. So this is something the Ministry of Education has been working on. That is our effort to try and make everything that is made available to the current uh, society of knowledge is also being made available to the national public schools. And what we can do and what they have been able to do is to bridge the gap between companies and schools, between society and schools, and we reduce this gap constantly. Today, the content that is present in our society are also present in our schools. And what we are trying to obtain or to attain is to make the content generated in our schools available for our society. We talk a lot about the infrastructure issues. You, more than anybody, know that we really work hard on infrastructure, on backhauls and connections and everything. But connections without content are worthless. And connections with content that is only foreign is something that we don't want as well. So we are investing heavily in content creation initiatives, particularly content not created by the Ministry of Education or culture by the government as a whole. What we want to make possible is to have our citizens be able to create their own content and be able to access its content. This is the great challenge for us, not only for the Ministry of Education, but for society as a whole, I believe. I try to be quick and succinct and try to complement what Riley has said. I thank you very much for the opportunity. Thank you.